welcome to our first ever Epic Generation Power Talk. We are so excited to be with you here today because we have 14 kids from ages 9 to 15 who will inspire you, make you laugh, and cry with their Power Talk speeches. Ooh, I am feeling the energy here. How about you, Nicole? Do you feel the energy? I can't wait to see what the kids have in store for us. I have to admit, I took a peek behind the scenes and they are preparing. They are excited and nervous. I know so many different speeches and topics and the adrenaline reminds me of my first time public speaking on stage. Nicole, how about you? Do you remember your first time speaking on stage? I do. I started acting and I was kind of nervous, but I was having fun. And I know that I put a lot of work into my speeches, so it was definitely worth it. Yeah, these kids have been preparing for eight weeks. Those who have been working hard and gone through training to deliver these powerful driven speeches. Wow, really? That sounds pretty intense. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word because some of them are funny and lighthearted while some can be practical and informational. And then you just have the speeches that just pull at your heartstrings. You're right. I actually saw one of them warming up her vocal cords. I think she'll be singing. Hi, my name is Charmaine. I'm 13 years old and this is my dad, Christian. <laughs> I, I was born here in Canada, but I'm 100% Filipino and like many um, Filipinos out there, I'm really into music. I have loved singing since I was little. Um, I wrote my first song at six years old. Uh, I know how to play the piano, the ukulele, and I'm recently learning how to play guitar. When I was younger, I also loved making pretend vlogs on like my laptop for YouTube channel. And I think that really helped me with my speaking skills because when I was in about grade four, I got third place in Brampton West Public Speaking Competition. <laughs> my topic for today is why music is a universal language. And I chose this topic because, um, like I said before, I'm really into music. And I just wanted to know, like, how come that even if you speak a different language, if you don't speak English like me, that we can still connect through music and stuff? Our talk really, I think, helped her especially how she handles her nerves. That's, yes. that's I, I think that's where she really got a lot of help from her mentors. One of the things that really stuck to me was like the, the nervous button. So like if you if you press here like between your thumb and index like hard, then it, like it helps. So I'm doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll be fine, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> Are you ready to go on stage? Yeah. Let's go. All right. Do you want to play a game? It's really easy. All you have to do is guess the song I'm about to sing. Are you ready? La araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. Vino la iluvia y se la llevó. Salió ese hoyito, lo seco. Y la araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. If you guessed Itsy Bitsy Spider, you're correct. Notice that even if you still didn't understand the words, you still knew the song. Why? It's because music is a language in itself. I'm Charmaine, and I'm here to tell you exactly why that is. First off, what is a language? If you Google it, hey Google, what's a language? It's described as words or expressions used for communication. Now, some of you might be asking, how is music even a language? I mean, music is just music. If we go back to the little game we did at the beginning, I'm pretty sure most of you didn't exactly know what I was saying, but you still knew the song based on the melody. You see, whether it's in a different language or has no lyrics at all, just listening to it for a few seconds will make you easily recognize a song. As it happens, the music somehow communicates with your brain that accesses your memory, which acknowledges which song it belongs to. Still not convinced? Well, have you ever listened to a song once, and then the next time you hear it, it brings you back to the previous time you heard it? I'm pretty sure this has happened to you once or twice, and it's just like what some other languages do. For example, when you hear the song Jingle Bells, what comes to your mind? Christmas, right? This is because music has a way of helping people remember special events, like birthdays, graduations, weddings. You get the gist. Right now, there are thousands, if not millions of songs that make you want to dance and others that make you want to cry, which mostly depends on the type of instrument used and how it's being played. 
You could have lyrics that can make someone feel sad, but the melody or music makes someone feel more happy and upbeat. Notice, whenever you're listening to sad songs like Hello by Adele, Hello from the other side I must have called a thousand times There's more piano and violin, if you listen closely. Now what about dance songs like Because I'm happy, clap along If you feel like a room without a roof Because I'm happy, clap along If you feel like happiness is the truth Happy by Pharrell there's usually a big drum beat and some electric guitars in the background. This just goes to show how music has its own unique way of communicating with your emotions, which is why a lot of people tell you to listen to more happy tunes when you're feeling down. For me, I listen to What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction, Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo, and We Don't Talk About Bruno from Encanto. If you haven't listened to any of these songs, you should definitely consider listening to them after this. When you learn a new language, it becomes easier to talk and connect with more people, right? It's pretty much the same with music, as liking a certain music genre or a popular artist can connect you with fans all over the world, not just one place. Take BTS, for example, the world's most popular Korean boy band today. The majority of their songs are in Korean, but their music is appreciated globally. They even made it to the Billboard charts. Their fan base has expanded worldwide, and especially because of social media, they can connect with the BTS army anywhere. You can also see this at different music festivals like Les Francofolies de la Rochelle Festival, the Colombian Folk Festival, and of course, Coachella. Because music doesn't have one specific language it bases itself off, you can connect with people all over the world through your love of music with them. So you see, music for me is a universal language. I mean, it can access your memory, it can help shift your mood quickly, and it's one of the best ways to connect and communicate with people all over the world. Learning how to read and write music can be a bit of a challenge, just like learning a new language like French or Spanish. It takes some time to figure out what different notes and symbols are, and it takes a lot of practice to learn an instrument, sing a song, or dance to a beat. But with music, you don't need to learn all these things to appreciate it. As Maria von Trapp from The Sound of Music once said, <clears throat> music acts like a magic key to which most tightly closed heart opens. Thank you for your time and so long, farewell, off we to sing goodbye, goodbye. Wow, just wow, I, I feel like singing now. So beautiful. Thank you, Charmaine. Her speech just made me feel so at home. I really love music. Right? I think I can sing a little bit of Itsy Bitsy Spider in Spanish. Uh, uh, sweet o uh, spidey o Itsy Bitsy Spider. No? Um, just almost oh, there? Okay. All itsy, right. Itsy uh, went up the water spout. <laughs> Down came the rain. Uh, okay, you okay. know, don't worry about her, guys. We will be back after this commercial. Oh, no, I think I kind of got it there. 